One of the first chemical reactions that students learn about when they first study chemistry is what happens when you take a piece of sodium and you drop it into water and it skitters about. And what is happening here is that it is reacting with the water and it is producing hydrogen gas. Now, what you see coming off here is actually not hydrogen gas, that's steam because there's so much heat being produced by this reaction that the water is being converted into steam. Now there's another way to produce hydrogen, which again, students learn about very quickly when they study chemistry, and that is the process of electrolysis. When you take uh, water and you pass an electric current through it, you break the water down into hydrogen and oxygen you can actually see the small bubbles of hydrogen um, in here. Now this device actually is uh, supposed to produce hydrogenated water for drinking, which is total quackery, but never mind that. The fact is that you can break water down into hydrogen and oxygen. But you can also do the reverse. You can combine hydrogen and oxygen to produce energy. And that is what happens in a fuel cell. Why are we talking about this? Because we're talking about a hydrogen car. That's what that is. It's a hydrogen car and inside it has a fuel cell. So that if you give it some hydrogen and some oxygen, it will generate energy, turn the wheels and run the car. Where does that hydrogen come from? It has to be generated generated the same way that I'm generating here through the process of electrolysis. <clears throat> this is the electrolyzer. What you need is to put water in here and uh, connect it to a current, which of course is sort of the fly in the ointment because you have to put in energy in order to do this. And then you can fuel the car. It's got a place here and you just plug that in and Hydrogen goes from the generator into the car, and the car will then run on a fuel cell. Now, hydrogen cars really do exist. Well, obviously, this one exists, and this is real. You can actually buy a, this. Uh, it's obviously a scale model, but it also works in real life. But there are problems with it. The problem is that you have to generate the hydrogen in the first place. The easiest way to generate hydrogen is by burning methane. But unfortunately, when you burn methane, that also produces carbon dioxide, which is a greenhouse gas. So that's not very good. However, if you can generate hydrogen by using clean energy, such as the solar panel or hydropower or wind power, then you're looking at a different story. So here's a solar panel and you can actually hook the solar power uh, device up to the generator, and you can produce hydrogen, which then you can pump into the car. And that can happen in real life as well. In Vancouver, for example, they have hydrogen-powered buses. Now, the hydrogen is not in the form of gas. It is compressed into a liquid, which means that it's pretty difficult to, to handle. So it's not quite like just putting a hose into a car as we do with, uh, with gasoline. On the other hand, hydrogen is a clean fuel. When it is pumped into a car, used uh, to, in a fuel cell, there's no carbon dioxide produced. Nothing comes out of the exhaust pipe. Now, there are also all kinds of stories on the internet about cars running on water. Well, what they are talking about is that when you use a fuel cell, hydrogen and oxygen combined to make water, and that water can be, again, hydrolyzed to produce more hydrogen. But of course, every time that you do that, you lose some energy because you're running the car. So you, you, there's no free lunch here. There's no perpetual motion machine. But in the future, I think we really will have hydrogen-powered cars uh, as soon as we develop solar cells or hydroelectric power and sufficient quantities to be able to electrolyze water to produce hydrogen uh, cheaply.
There are other concerns. Everyone remembers, of course, the Hindenburg and the explosion. But the hydrogen now is stored in cars in very safe compartments made of carbon fiber. So there you go, all the way from dropping sodium into water to produce hydrogen, electrolyzer. Now you get the science behind the hydrogen-powered car.